punishment is not for revenge but to lessen crime and reform the criminal hey i'm nivia and today i'm going to speak about the book mafia queens of mumbai by s hussein zaidi and jane bogus this book is a compilation of powerful tales of 13 women from the world of ganglands or crime before I jump to the stories in this book, let me tell you that I liked this book. And the main reason why I like this book is because the authors have ensured that they have not glorified the women criminal activities or uh, the underworld activities are not celebrated in this book. It's just that they have written the stories of their life. Also, the authors have researched very well and interviewed multiple people, including the women themselves, their close ones like relatives, then wet hair and journalists, retired policemen and witnesses. If at all they found that there are any contradictions in their statements and that part is not mentioned in this book and which means that this book is highly authentic. Now let's dig into some of the stories mentioned in this book. Let's start with Matriarch of Khamatipura, which is quite popular right now because of the movie which is going to get released very soon by Sanjay Leela Bansali and the uh, character of Gangubai Khatiabadi is played by Alia Bhatt. Ganga Harjivandas Khatiawadi hailed from Gujarat and she fell in love with her father's employee and accountant named Ramnik Lal. They both eloped to Mumbai. However, things changed when Ramnik sold her to a brothel for rupees 500. And the story is about later how she transformed to the brothel madam Gangubai Khatiawadi. She was so bold that the Prime Minister then Jawaharlal Nehru was also impressed by her. Once Nehru questioned her on why she is into this business and not into a good job or get a good husband. What she did was then propose him to which Nehru was taken aback. And then she mentioned, you can stay calm, it's easy to preach than practice. Post which Nehru just remained silent. Another gripping story is that of Ashraf Khan who was more popularly known as Sapna Didi. Her husband was murdered by Dawood Ibrahim's team and hence she wanted to take revenge on him with the help of Hussein Ustara who was also a foe of Dawood. However, their mission failed uh, because their lives were also taken in the interim in spite of the hard work or efforts especially which Sapna had put in. Like for example, she learned how to use a gun, she learned martial arts, she learned how to ride a motorbike and much more. The next story is about Mahalakshmi Papamani, the wealthiest drug baroness in Mumbai. She migrated from Tamil Nadu to Mumbai at a very young age and then later she got married to an alcoholic named Devendra. One day he met an accident and got paralyzed and that's when she had to step outside to start an earning to support her family of five children and an unemployed uh, paralyzed husband. With the help of her friend and neighbor Savitri, she got into drug peddling and the business just got bigger and bigger. Soon she got separated from her husband Devendra and it was him who revealed information about her prime properties at Salem and Mumbai. Also one of her daughters Jai Shri was also standing as a witness against her because of her mother's attempts to keep her away from her lover. It said that Papamani had a lot of followers but none were from her family. There are a lot more other stories which are grasping ones like for example that of Tharanam Khan more popularly known as Karodpati Bar Girl who was alleged to have involvement in the international cricket betting racket wherein even uh, the actor Aditya Pancholi and the cricketer Mutaya Murli therein were also surfaced in the investigation. Also the story of Archana Sharma is mentioned in this book. One of the prominent tabloid labelled her as the dawn with the killer looks. She executed a lot of sensational murders, kidnaps and extortions and hence became one of India's most wanted woman gangster. This book also mentions about wives of dons who ordered executions, threatened people and ran huge crime syndicates. However, one particular story made me think of what are the criteria that the authors put in to choose that these are the women who are the mafia queens of Mumbai and that story is about Monica Bedi. So Monica was staying with her family in Drammen, a city in Norway. At the age of 17, she moved to England to learn English literature. In the middle of that, she came to India uh, just for a holiday or a vacation. And that's when she met the yesteryear actor Manoj Kumar, who told her that her face had that perfect blend of 1950s or 1960s Bollywood actresses. And that's when she gets that aspiration to get into Bollywood. Later, she gets a call from a businessman named Arslan Ali, with whom she gets into an affair. Majorly, they had communications through phone. 
one day she gets a call from him stating that she needs to get to dubai very soon and when she meets him there he mentions that uh, he is not aslan ali and he reveals his identity as abu salim and then she was put behind the bars by entering other country with forged documents a lot of her personal life is also mentioned in this book like for example shifting of religions like she shifted from sikhism to islam to christianity and again back to sikhism and also about the big boss uh, life and all of that but the question is is she really a mafia queen or not there are a lot more captivating stories about different women who are celebrities in their world underworld we should definitely know about them and for that you should read this book until we meet next time this is nevia signing off take care keep reading a lot of books bye